Hey, it's Steve Lindsley. Welcome to my shop. In this video, this is the second video of my staved and segmented vase project. Uh, in the first video, I showed you how I made the staved portion of it. Uh, in this video, I'm going to make the rings uh, and glue it all up and do finish turning on it and uh, complete the project. So, um, if you haven't watched the first video, um, take some time when you get a chance to go back and watch that. In the meantime, enjoy this video and I'll show you how I put this project together. Now that I have this uh, stave piece turned around, uh, I can go ahead and take some measurements off the bottom and the top, uh, and then I can go ahead and finish my drawing. Uh, the bottom turned out to be just a little over three, three and an eighth or so, and the top is um, about five, in pretty much five inches. The whole thing is about seven and a half, uh, seven and a quarter, seven and a half inches tall. Um, this is really no different than doing a feature ring on some of my other vessels. When I do a feature ring, I always do that first uh, and then determine what the diameter is from that. And then I use that to finish my drawing for the rest of the segmented rings. So now that I know those those two uh, dimensions, I can go ahead and get my uh, my little drawing out and finish that up. So let me show you how I do that. Here's the uh, top section of my drawing. Um, I measured the the vessel and it comes out to be um, five inches in diameter which is exactly what I drew the diagram at so these are uh, you probably can't see them on the camera but there's one inch um, squares there so I'm out here at five inches for that um, I went a little wider with the with that ring the quarter of an inch so on the diameter it would make it five and a half inches to here uh, the next ring is pretty much the same and then so on down the line. So if, if this is a scale drawing, so I can measure from the center line out to where the uh, the piece is, and I get I get the uh, radius, which I have to double to make the uh, the diameter. So once I know the diameter, the uh, diameter time pi is the circumference. Uh, once I know the circumference, I can divide it by uh, the number of segments, which in this case are 12, and that makes this one a uh, the first segment with uh, 1.44 inches, so these two would be the same. Um, then I take the basically the circumference and I add three inches to it to get the total length of the board that I need. Uh, and in this case, the um, the width of the segment is this part right here. So in this case, it's uh, 0.85 inches or 875, uh, and this one's 1.25 or one and a quarter. Um, so that's in the three quarters of inch thick. The angle is 15 degrees, and then what the uh, what the uh, material is. So these first three rings are going to be Jatoba, uh, and this top ring will be Winge. Uh, it's pretty much same on the bottom. Uh, just a matter of doing the doing the same thing, uh, measuring out. Now this is about three inches. So I and, and the piece is a little over, but so that's not. It'll, it'll work out fine. So then I, I just measure the diameter and do the same calculation. So now that I know all that, I'm going to go ahead and um, mill up the lumber for the, for the uh, pieces. Uh, and then I'll get the wedgie sled out and cut the segments. We'll Well, this is gluing up one of the rings. Um, uh, I did a good job gluing it up. Unfortunately, I forgot that I wanted to put a piece of black veneer between the uh, pieces. So I got a nice glued up ring that I can't use on the vessel that I'm making. So I had to go back and uh, recut re the, re -cut the uh, segments and make another ring. I, I didn't show it. It's just it's doing the same thing, except I just stuck a little hunk of of a black veneer between the pieces so yeah yeah if that's the worst thing that happens i'll be uh i'll be all right
Now that I have the staved piece hollowed out, I'm going to do a little work on the uh, base piece and connect it to. Uh, because this is ingrain and there's really not a lot of uh, contact surface there when I put the two pieces together, uh, I made a little slight rabbit. Let me see. I don't, I don't know if you can see it. Just on the inside of the, the uh, piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down um, so that I put a tenon on here so that it fits in there. So that I got a little bit of, um, not only will it be glued here, but I got a little bit of side grain that I can actually glue to. So uh, it needs to hold it, um, you know, it needs to be glued on fairly firmly. So what I've done is taken my calipers and I've set them to the inside of the rabbit. Um, so then I'm going to make a mark on the... Um, piece so I know where to turn it down to so uh, let me uh, move this stuff out of the way and we'll do that Once I had the uh, piece marked, uh, I just used a square nose scraper, a skew, a parting tool, whatever it took to get the uh, little tenon on there. I, I would stop a lot and, and uh, check it to make sure that it would be a tight fit into the, uh, into the end of the staved piece. So it took a little bit of trial and error, to, uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of time to get it to uh, what I wanted, but once I did it, was, it was a nice fit. Once I got the fit I wanted, I just used some tight bond ultimate uh, to glue it on. Uh, I'd make sure I was a little bit careful about where I put the glue. I, I don't want to. I didn't want a lot of squeeze out on the inside of the vessel. It would have been difficult, if not impossible, to get it out. So uh, I was very careful where I put it, and uh, I used enough glue, but not too much. Time to start gluing up the rings. Uh, you can see I'm going to use this uh, quick and thick glue again. Um, and this ring, you can see the veneer between this, this segment piece, um, which is what I wanted to do in the one I showed earlier, but neglected to do that. So, uh, And I also put a piece of veneer between the rings, so they're kind of a out, black outline around the uh, segment pieces. That looks pretty nice. Okay, here's the uh, the top rings glued together. Uh, I put a piece of wax paper between this one and the, the base piece. Um, I wanted to glue the, oops, almost dropped it. I wanted to glue the veneer on to, to this ring, but I'm not ready to glue the two pieces together yet. So um, I just put some wax paper between the two of them, pressed it together, and then that's glued on there. This will all get turned away. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is we're going to put this back on here and hold it with the tailstock and do some rough shaping on the outside. Uh, once I get it kind of 
roughed out, then I can work on the base piece and then uh, the inside will need, uh, this will need to be hollowed out. So let's get the tail stock back up with the big live center on it and press those two together. So let's see whether, how balanced we are. Actually, actually it's pretty good. So I'm gonna get a uh, 3 8 inch bowl gouge and we're gonna shape, start shaping this uh, to a rough shape. Uh, once we get it um, rough and get it all hollowed out, then we'll put it back together and finish shaping it. So let me get my bowl gouge and we'll start working on these rings up here. Now that I finish shaping the top, I'm going to do a little work on this bottom ring, which is proud of the uh, side of the stave pieces. So it's just a matter of getting it turned down to close to where it needs to be, but uh, I'll have to do a little bit of finish turning on it uh, later on, but it needs to be uh, taken down a little bit at this point. Well, this vase will look kind of funny if I don't put a plug in the bottom of it here. So uh, I'm just trying to clean up the uh, the little and make it round. I'm using a little uh, square nose scraper that I've actually ground a uh, edge on the side of it. So I can actually cut with the side of the scraper. So it's just trying to make a make that part round and uh, then I'll make a plug uh, to fit in it. So that'll be next after I finish this piece. I'm going to put a maple plug in the bottom of this piece. Uh, I use my calipers to measure the opening at the bottom and then uh, I'm just going to go ahead and mark the diameter on this uh, piece of maple and uh, turn it around so that it fits into the bottom of my uh, base that I've been working on.
Well, the idea of this clip was to show you how I glued the plug in, but uh, I totally hosed it and, and didn't even put most of it on the camera. So uh, it was just a matter of putting some glue on the plug. I did put the glue more towards the, the outside piece of the plug. So when I pushed it in, uh, I didn't get any glue squeeze out on the uh, inside. Okay, it's back to the top piece. Uh, I have it in the large jaws and uh, have a little small cone center holding it there. And I'm just going to work on that top ring mainly. Uh, I want to do some final shaping on it. And I also, I want a little bit of a shoulder between where it connects to the, uh, the, the first Jatoba piece there. So I use the skew and parting tool and gouge, whatever I needed to... Uh, get it so I just put a little bit of a maybe a, about an eighth of an inch shoulder there just to make a separation between the two rings. Well that first Jatoba ring below the Wenge ring was a little wider than it needed to be so I just used a drill bit and uh, drilled it out. Uh, that also gave me a nice uh, round centered hole where I can reverse this piece and put it in the uh, the, the chuck in uh, expansion mode and hollow out the inside of it. going to use the elbow tool to hollow out this piece. Uh, I certainly could have hollowed this part with a bowl gouge and a scraper and had uh, you know similar results but I had a new toy so I felt like it was uh, felt like it would be some fun to play with so that's what I used but like I said it could have been I could have used the bowl gouge and a, and a scraper and achieved the same result. gave the glue plenty of time to dry on this plug in the bottom of the stave piece so now it's just a matter of cleaning it up so I used a uh, 3 8 inch bowl gouge and a round nose scraper and with a little bit of effort I got the uh, I got the bottom all cleaned up and looking real nice Right, the pieces are sanded on the inside. Uh, I sanded them up to 220. Uh, it's time to put some finish on them. Um, on the inside, I'm just going to use some of uh, this uh, 
clear shellac. Uh, that'll be that'll be fine for that. I got a different different finish for the outside. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, getting a brush of some sort and putting it on the inside. Maybe I'll probably put I'll put on a couple of coats and sand it with a little bit of 320, and then I'll probably put on a, a third coat, and then that'll be the uh, that'll be the end of it. So. After we're doing that, then we can go ahead and put it back on the lathe and, and uh, glue the two pieces together. Uh, and then after that, um, just a little bit of shaping and sanding on the outside and um, the woodworking on this piece will be done. Time to glue the two halves together. So I'm just using a little Typon Ultimate and a foam brush. Again, I, I want to be careful about where I put the glue. I don't want a lot of squeeze out. I don't want any squeeze out on the on the inside. So it's just a matter of uh, uh, being careful where you put the glue and then put the two pieces together and uh, press it together with the tail, tail stock and let the glue, glue dry. Well, the glue's dry. It's time to shape the outside. Uh, a round nose scraper uh, does a good job cleaning up the uh, cleaning up the piece and getting it ready for sand. Well, I'm starting to sand them with a piece of uh, 80 grit. Uh, I'll work my way up to 220. The 80 does a good job of taking out any tool marks and leveling everything up. So once I get it sanded, uh, this piece will be uh, ready for some finish and it's, uh, it'll be done. That's how I made my staved and segmented vase project. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, once you got set up for doing the stave, particularly the stave pieces, it was pretty easy to make multiples, and that's what I did. Uh, they're all a little bit different in shape, um, a little bit different in size, similar in shape. Uh, this one's a little smaller, and this one's kind of the medium sized one, and then this one is a larger one. Um, I didn't want them to all be exactly the same, so therefore I would call them siblings and not triplets. <laughs> if, they, if they were triplets, they'd probably be all pretty much the same, but um, I think they look nice. So anyway, it was, a, it was a fun project. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put some photos up at the end of this, this video. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, please go ahead and subscribe, and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video.